Okay. Um, I understand we've got uh, Horizons Regional Council online. Um, so we might kick off into our next little bit a little bit earlier if you're ready. Uh, welcome, Councillors Sam Ferguson and also Mark Reid. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'll, we will give you 10 minutes for your submission. Um, if you'd like to save some time at the end for questions, that would be fantastic. But um, yeah, welcome. Over to you. Kia ora, Angela. Yeah, um, tēnā koe, everyone. Sam Ferguson. So I chair the Passenger Transport Committee at Horizons Regional Council, and I'm joined by um, Mark, Mark, our Transport Manager at Horizons. And this morning we have just adopted our um, RPTP, or through, through our Transport Committee, so that's off to our full council um, in a couple of weeks. Uh, so we're, we're all on this journey together. But during our process of preparing our, our regional public transport plan and taking that out to the community and hearing submissions, um, there, there was certainly a number of things that we heard that thought would, would be worth sharing with all of you. And, and obviously you, you have read our submission, but I, I just draw your attention um, to page three where we have a summary of, of our points there. And, and for me, it's very much about where can we work together um, because we have lines on a map that separate our, our responsibilities, but that's not the boundary of our communities. Our communities travel across those lines on maps, and Tamaran Manui is a good example there um, where there's a really strong connection with the Waikato region. Uh, and, and so the opportunity to be able to um, ensure that we have a level of alignment with our planning and, and specifically what we're planning through regional count through horizons is a region wide review of our of our transport um, networks and, and services both what we deliver at the moment but also what we could be delivering in the future and and it would be really great to include our neighbors in, in that conversation so that, that's certainly one one of the points that we've um, submitted on is if there's an opportunity um, for for you as a council to signal a willingness to work with us um, in one shape or another through through that review. Um, and, and I guess another good example from our submissions, we, we had um, members from Taranaki region that, that were submitting and, and talking about the benefits of, again, working together with joined up transport um, services. The, the other area that, that we've certainly had um, strong desire from, from our council, but also submissions from the community is around regional rail. And, and I mean, there's a lot happening in that space through central government and, and um, both, both our regional councils. But again, where there's opportunity to um, explore regional, how, how we can work together for regional rail connections south of Waikato and into the Horizons region. Uh, really welcome that opportunity. Um, and I think the final one that I'll, I'll just touch on, um, again, it isn't a summary, but, but um, we're, we're very supportive of the um, trial service that uh, is in place from Te Mananui to um, the, the DHB service and just encourage that to be extended. Um, I think at the moment that's proposed as a three month trial. So we would encourage that to be at least a, a year because um, we, we certainly know that there is need from that community and um, we, we are supportive of, of that. So yeah, for me, really just setting that scene, that, that um, willingness to work together, um, but not wanting to repeat everything that we have already written in our submission. Do you want to add anything, Mark? Um, yeah, just to reflect on, I guess, where we did um, as officers here the most through our consultation was, was really around um, how, we, how we best serve some of our rural communities. Um, you know, we, we are a predominantly rural um, regional council, but we heard you know, not a lot from our urban areas, but actually really about you know, both connecting those rural areas to our large cities and, and beyond. And that's probably where we saw the biggest change from where, from where we as officers saw it. Um, and, and, and with our Passive Transport Committee, 
Um, and so we've got our own conversation and, and deliberations. So yeah, um, as Sam said, it's really just trying to see that tech form to be able to, you know, work best across our region and, and beyond um, as we go forward. Um, I'll leave it there and I think we're open to any questions you might have. Uh, thank you, Sam and Mark. Um, appreciate your um, thoughts there. Um, are there any questions from the floor? Uh, yep, Councillor Eugene. Yep, thank you. Um, not so much question. Um, thanks, guys, for presenting. Um, but, uh, but some comments. Um, um, I really support your submission, and I, uh, I'm a firm believer in having some borderless decision making and collaboration. Um, if we work together, especially around that regional um, rail, how we can work that and be able to transport people. Um, I come from Waikato District Council, and same we have a lot of rural and um, having the trying to create that connectivity to um, mainstream or um, stronger transport links is, is really important for our communities as well. So I think some good work um, with what you've said in, in your submission and how we work together to, to do that um, makes us be able to advocate stronger for central government for obviously we all need that funding to make these things happen. So thanks. Thanks, Eugene. Uh, Councillor Teg. Yes, I was interested in your comments around connectivity between you know rural towns. I wondered if you have any thoughts around how you might um, meet that demand or, or request. Um, you see it as a, um, a timetable service uh, on demand, and do you see those types of vehicles being electric in the, in the immediate future? Mm. Yeah, well, so I, I guess John. Addressing the, the decarbonisation and, and through our um, regional public transport plan, we, we've got some pretty strong goals there um, towards decarbonisation. So fit and vehicle types are, are certainly part of that. But uh, that, that's certainly we have we have taken the approach of, take, of that regional review. Uh, it's when we've been looking at um, point solutions or, or services just for small communities that we, we um, lose some of our opportunities, but where we're looking at connections between major centres and picking up a, a number of regional communities at the same time, we have the ability to strengthen connections um, for, for both those smaller communities and, and the larger. So, yeah, that for us, because we, we do have some really um, geographically spread out communities in our region and, and, and the regional review is where we hope to deliver better outcomes. I mean, there's certainly going to be challenges. The, one of the difficulties, I guess, when we're talking about um, on-demand services is need, needing to be able to see the, the benefits, the transport benefits, and, and I, I guess my, my view, I, I haven't yet really seen um, good, good benefits or good outcomes in other communities in the country where that has been trialled at this point. So a little weary, but certainly if there's a compelling case, and, and we, we have um, touched, certainly made, made space for that in our regional tra transport plan. Uh, Councillor yeah. Rodney Dow. Yeah, hi, um, yeah, thanks for that. I'm just interested in if you've done any homework or any anybody's done any homework on, say, getting a train to the mountain to, the, to go skiing. Like, <laughs> well, you, you, you may know that. There's heaps of people, I've like, no trauma, there's heaps of people zoom through town in a rush to, because the mountain's on the mouth or something. But um, yeah, I'm just interested in if you've ever looked at any like a special events type train. Mm. Perhaps, you know, take, take the family and then bus them to the mountain for the day. Just, Yes. And, and that is specifically, in our submission, we make reference to the Taupo uh, mountain connection, um, not, not necessarily by train through the Taupo, but, but acknowledging um, the, the need for exploring that, but, but it, it's in its infancy. So that, that's the type of conversation that we would welcome. Not, um, not, not by a Taupo, mate. there's no train track there. You'd have to go by a national park. Yeah, exactly. Park. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what I was meaning, yeah. Yeah, so we, we don't have um, anything concrete, but 
but welcome though, though that joined up thinking and those conversations. I mean, we, we want to deliver similar outcomes, and, and I guess it comes back to that point. A line on the map, uh, we don't want that to be a barrier because people travel across those lines. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, um, yeah, I agree with what you're saying there, Sam, about um, our two councils working together and forging those relationships. Um, we've got lots of similarities with our smaller urban and our rural communities, um, and I think we could learn off each other um, moving forward. Um, yeah, thank you for also noting the um, the health should service that we've um, tr we're trialing. Well, DHB is trialing um, from Taumanui up to Hamilton each day. Um, yeah, thanks. Fantastic suggestion in your submission to have it at least a 12 month trial. Um, and then also the rail connecting through your region as well, um, south of Hamilton. Um, yeah, really in support of um, what you've said there as well. Um, yeah, so appreciate you making the time to submit to us today. Um, and yeah, definitely keen to keep those lines of communication open moving forward. So um, yeah, thank you. And we will. Definitely catch up another time. Okay, thank you, Angela. Yes. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. All right, we move to our next submitter, which is uh, Mr. Chris McKellar. Welcome again. And this is on page 195. So, Chris. Um, you have 10 minutes to present. If you'd like to save some time for questions at the end, that would be most helpful. Okay. Um, thank you. Over to you. Thank you, Angela. Uh, my name is Chris McKellar. I'm the coordinator of the New Zealand Public Transport Forum, which is a collection of um, public transport advocates wanting to see a more integrated national public transport network stretching from Kaitaia down to Bluff using um, Sub, uh, using subsidised public transport services, whether it's rail, passenger rail, buses, ferries, etc. Um, I'm glad that the government or the cabinet has, has decided to get rid of the PTOM and now moving towards the sustainable um, public transport framework, which actually is going to make it easier, especially for the public transport forums connecting communities 2030 initiative, which is basically talking about national passenger transport throughout the country, all covering all 16 regions. Um, we need to have this because, as I found out um, on Friday last week, when I travelled up to Auckland on to Huia and came back down on into city, we need to have this integration um, because we need to get cars off the road. And when you start looking at what public transport can do, especially um, if it's integrated, we can move a lot of um, non-essential cars off the road and freeing up our roads for more essential services. But the thing is, the thing that is, is, is going to be the problem will be, especially when it comes to regional and interregional rail and urban rail, especially in the Canterbury region, is the national rail network. And currently, while Kiwi Rail is both the train operator and the network operator, we're not going to see much happening there because Kiwi Rail has specifically stated in their national rail plan, in their current national rail plan, that freight is their main business and any passenger rail has got to be done by regional councils. Now, we know to introduce um, regional and interregional rail, we need to have an upgraded network and we need to have that separated away from Kiwi Rail and owned by the government as a national steel highway and also have open access. So open access to any rail operator who wants to come into the country to run passenger rail or freight rail besides Kiwi Rail um, and also for heritage rail operators. Because heritage rail operators can be an important part in providing regional public transport. And like what's been proposed in Gisborne with the Patoa Rail Car Society having three silver fern rail cars. And they're talking about running train services 
uh, but initially between Hamilton, uh, between Napier and Hastings. But, but we, what concerns me is at the moment, with regards to the Waikato Regional Council, we're still not organised when it comes to having integration. Um, Tahuia is not integrated with the bus network, and the bus network is not integrated with Tahuia. Um, and it should be. It used to be, um, but it's not. And it costs me, every time I want to go into Tahuia, it costs me $21 to go from Hamilton West down to Frankton Railway Station, where I could take, used to take a bus. Um, Tahuia has been seen by a lot of people um, especially within government, as the sort of guinea pig to what regional rail should be. And Tohuvia has got a lot of potential, but not in its current format. It needs to be a minimum of four return services a day, Monday to Friday, and three return services a day um, on Saturday and Sunday and public holidays. It's about connecting Waikato to the Auckland region. And that then is backed up with certain intercity services, especially the uh, limited stop Hamilton Auckland Airport, sorry, Hamilton Manukau City Auckland <coughs> Airport and um, Sky City. Now, I came back on that service on Friday and they ran, there was a 54 seater coach and 47 passengers. Most of them got on at Auckland Airport, domestic and Auckland Airport International. So, we, so the regional council needs to start looking at maybe we should be working with commercial operators um, in regards to providing additional backup public transport services for the region. The other thing which we want to look at is getting the Northern Explorer, that regional council's approach for great almighty Kiwi Rail and say, look, we're quite happy to do a guaranteed C payment if you're prepared to stop at certain stations. Now, the Northern Explorer is a standard train service. It's designed for tourists, but it's also designed for point-to-point -point travel for fam families, friends, relations, and possibly, in some cases, business. This will fill in the gap between establishment of a proper regional and interregional rail network. So, got my five minutes worth. Um, have you got any more to add? Oh, no. I, you, Oh, I prefer to answer the questions. Okay, that's fine. Um, yeah, thank you for what you've shared so far and for your written submission as well. Um, Councillor Rodney, oh, got a question? You see, I want to ask questions. <laughs> I'm just interested about the rail because that uh, it's been quite a lot of people submitting, wanting to expand the rail and more passengers. So I'm trucking the other side of it. Basically, put a whole lot of trucks passenger trains on the rail, then all of a sudden the freight trains are going to fit from fat freight service on trucks, so that's on the road, so it's a detriment to it. But it seems to me like Kiwi Rail controlling the train tracks, so will we somehow get some... Is that how you see it? Like, yeah. Personally, I think Kiwi Rail needs to be the train operator. It can't do two jobs. It cannot be a network op rail network operator and a train operator, especially if the network is closed and it blocks any initiative to establish decent rail. The other thing too, the National Rail Network is basically a freight network with speeds of average about 80 to 100 kilometres an hour. There needs to be serious work to upgrade it to allow increased freight and passenger train movements, like getting speeds up to 140 kilometres an hour um, is, is a must, but there needs to be a lot of work on it. And, you know, you're talking about all-part figure for speeds up to and upgrading it, strengthening tunnel uh, bridges, strengthening, uh, upgrading tunnels, putting in uh, more properly high, speed, high train or high train movement um, track usage. There's going to be a lot of deviation work. And we're talking, the government's talk to upgrade it to make it a national steel highway network He's talking around about $30 billion at least. But that's done over a period of time. So if you look at the upgrading of the Wellington Rail Network, that's $7.4 billion. Just to upgrade the Auckland to Hamilton Rail, well, Pukekohe to Hamilton Rail Corridor, 
um, to 140, you're looking about 2.5 billion. Electrification, I think it's about 1.8 billion. So this work needs to come into it. If we want to have all these, you know, express freight trains, if we're going to have Pacific National coming in as the second freight operator, um, if we're going to be running a frequent regional and inter-regional train services, we need to have that network upgraded. And it's got to come from the regional councils. Uh, the regional councils have got to start collectively pushing the government to say, look, you're going to have to do something about Kiwi Rail. And its current business model, it's not conducive to sustainable public transport. Thank you. Um, thanks, Rodney. Um, Chris, you mentioned about um, increasing Tahuia's services. Yeah. And you mentioned connecting Auckland and Hamilton. Could you just ex um, expand on how you would sort of see those four return services servicing both Hamilton and Auckland, Waikato right. and Auckland? Right. Currently, Tahuia has three train sets, four carriage train sets sitting at Tarapa. On a Monday to Friday, basically one set is used, so there's two sets sitting there doing nothing. The proposal which um, we, we discussed was to, is to have one train set based in Auckland at Westfield, so it would leave at 7 o'clock in the morning, head southbound to Hamilton, basically a, a four-carriage set. The 6.15 to, uh, service from Hamilton to Auckland would be a four- to five-carriage set, and it will still stick to its current timetable. So the Auckland service southbound to Hamilton would turn around, then go back up to Auckland, and then back down again, then back up. The northbound service from Hamilton will go up to Auckland, down to Hamilton, back up to Auckland, down. So that would spread it from basically from 6.15 through to, to who is rival what into Eight, Hamilton again. about 7.50, isn't it? Yeah, 7.50 or whatever it says. Um, so that means we're having a, a crew based in Auckland, which basically most of the Tuhua crew come from the Northern Explorer train crews. So that's not an issue. Um, the other alternative for that is to have the crew to go drive up early in the morning, pick up the train at Westfield, take it through to the Strand to bring that service down. But I would say it would be more economical to have a crew based in in Hamilton. There is, in Auckland, there is a gap in the timetable of about two hours, which will allow uh, for any change of carriages for maintenance. The maintenance facility will still be here in Hamilton. The spare tr carriages will be also here in Hamilton. So if there is an issue with a carriage, the carriage can be swapped out um, and a new one replaced without affecting the schedule. Yeah, thanks for that. Um, just uh, just one further question. Um, seeing as those southbound <clears throat> trains would be mostly benefiting Auckland, um, how do you sort of see the current funding model of ratepayers from the Waikato seemingly subsidising Aucklanders travelling down? It all comes back how the sustainable public transport framework is going to work. Um, I, I think that I, I can't see Auckland Region funding it, but at the same token, we need to have that Auckland. As Todd Noel put in his article, that it will benefit the Waikato Region if you've got that morning service coming down. Um, I think ratepayers, if they're seeing a good service, um, and especially the regional ratepayers are seeing a good service, I don't think it would be an issue. Because technically, it is still a Waikato-based train operation. It's just having one train, that spare train set that's sitting idle at Tarapa every day of the week is actually based in Auckland, and it's actually earning revenue. That's how I see it. So I don't, I, I see Waikato Regional Council probably end up funding it if it's um, outbound out of Auckland. But then once again, it's about connecting better public transport connection between the Auckland region and the Waikato region. Okay, cool. Thanks, Chris, for your thoughts, um, and thank you for your submission and taking the time to come and talk to us today. Um, yeah, much appreciated.
Um, yeah. Okay. Okay, our next submitter is Sue Robertson from Tamahiri Community Committee. Welcome, Sue. That's right. If you just hit the right button. Yep, that's the one. And you have 10 minutes. If you'd like to leave some time for questions at the end, that'd be fantastic. Okay, thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to speak today. Um, Tamahiri Community Committee represents an area of around 5,000 residents just to the south of Hamilton City. We're a rural residential area where everybody drives cars. Um, of late, we have been lucky enough to have lots of cycleways built through and around our area, which has shown that there's a real appetite to get onto bikes and to walk and to do things a little bit differently. We've also got a a huge amount of extra growth that's coming from the retirement sector with two villages that are in expansion mode and really contributing to a different demographic in our area. In the last um, approximately three years, we've um, got ourselves a village hub, which is a commercial area with about 12 to 15 businesses mm -hmm. operating. We've got a, a large playground, a skate bowl and a big recreation park. Now what we've found is that, and it is, it's by design rather than just happening, is that we now have a central piazza. We have a community focus area. It's adjacent to the school and we've looked at this plan purely from our own Tamahiri um, lens really. We've been, since we started 15 years ago, planning the hub, talking about public transport and we've told anybody that will listen, and I've been in front of committees from Waikato Regional Council mm -hmm. before, to talk about whether we could have bus connectivity in our area. And this seems to be a perfect time to actually cement that. Um, we agree with lots of the objectives of the plan, um, hard not to agree with them. As a, as a group, we're not so sure that objective one, the negative carbon emission, objective is should be number one or is achievable by 2027. Um, we admire that as a goal, but there's other things we'd like to see um, concentrated on first. Um, we agree with most of the other objectives and with the exception that we would like to see some of the routes that you're planning, and I know we're talking about ridership versus area, and that's a very, very difficult thing that none of us have got more expertise than the people you're dealing with. But we would like to see what more bums on seats for the least price and not to concentrate solely on carbon efficiency in the first instance. Um, we think there's quite a lot of areas in Hamilton where people don't use the bus system because it's not efficient and it's not regular and it's not frequent. And those are the things that we think have to happen. Um, I've made a, a note here that we think if it can provide the best service to the most people for the lowest investment in ongoing cost, and aim ultimately for carbon neutrality, that's what you should be looking for. We'd like to see at least two or three return visits of a bus network through Tamahiri in a day. Um, we don't mind whether it's a combination of a Auckland to Cambridge service stopping once a day and a Hamilton to Te Aumutu um, service stopping at another time during the day and then perhaps an orbiter run coming further out through our hub and stopping. Um, we don't mind if it's like that or we don't mind if it's the orbiter changing its route to come a little bit further south each time and including our village. But we do see a lot of benefit if people could rely on those services and know that they're going to be quick and regular, that they would start being, being used. And the questions in your proposal that were sent round, a lot of them related to um, asking about people's personal use. So out in our area, people really don't use buses apart from school children. And 
There's a mishmash of school buses which stop every which way. We're trying for safety purposes to get them around the hub area where there is car parking provided, not in the middle of roundabouts on off ramps, which is really scary. Um, and it, it happens on lots of the bus stops out there. Um, so we think there's a real opportunity within this and obviously a very small part of this to make huge benefits to our to our area. Um, that's probably all I need to say because the rest of it's all in the written submission. Excellent. Thank you, Sue, for um, your thoughts as well. Um, yeah, you mentioned, um, I believe, park and rides. Oh, yes, in my submission. Yeah, would, can you touch on, on those, please? Well, one of the visions that our community committee have for our, our village hub is that we do um, establish a park and ride area there because we think it's it's an ideal space for people in a segregated community because we all have large section sizes and we're a little bit further removed from what you find in town. But if we did have a park and ride out there, um, it would seem very sensible for people to go, park, get on a bus, go and do what they've got to do, come back, get their, get their vehicle. Um, it's also got good proximity to the airport, and I don't know whether that, in fact, becomes a conflict. I know parking at the airport is incredibly expensive, and I don't know what park and ride facility would do in terms of charging for parking. That's all pretty much up in the air. But... Um, we see that as being ideal if people, particularly from the retirement villages, could get themselves to the park and ride area. Then they don't have to worry about coming into town. They don't have to worry about driving in, in busy traffic or finding car parks. So, I mean, it's a, it's a one one situation. And even better if the bus service went to the hospital as well. <laughs> yeah, that was going to be my next question. Um, you know, do you have an idea of where you are? people would want to go? Obviously the hospital. Well, the hospital, the university, the um, central town, be able to get to the base. Yeah. Just those are the key things, I think. Um, we have got a wide demographic out there and our numbers are growing and they have potential to grow further. Our, our little area out there is going to be the second biggest um, population group in Waikato District Council's area, if it isn't already. Um, we're going to be bigger than Huntley. Yeah. And so people don't actually realise that. They, it sort of happened very quickly and we get forgotten about quite often because we're at the southern tip of Waikato District Council's area and you guys sort of, we, most of us identify and use Hamilton as our, our go-to, but we, we're not in your, uh, well, in Hamilton City's catchment, so um, we have to stand up and yell now. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, you are in a unique spot. Um, do you see lots of travel? Um, my parents live out that way at the Eventide, and they often head to Cambridge as a preference to coming into Hamilton. Do you sort of see bus routes going out to Cambridge? Well, that was the reason I suggested that maybe important. the Hamilton-Cambridge route, instead of stopping, I believe, on an on-ramp, off-ramp, sorry, on the way out, um, if it could come into the Tamahiri hub, at maybe to, on its way out and on its way back, that would be probably very useful because people do identify with Cambridge. Thank and the same with Te Amutu. Yeah. Um, I'll let you, Eugene ask some questions. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks, Sue. Good to see you again. Yes. Um, yes, it's like I know that we have talked a lot about how, how do we do some transport um, nodes uh, for that Tamahiri area and whether we extend on to be able to create a, a transport system that brings it into Hillcrest and links up to the orbiter, et cetera, et cetera. So in, in June, we had some funding. So at the June infrastructure meeting, we passed to use that funding and fund some trial services, which start in October. Um, to, and Tamahiri is, is a service that we're looking at um, extending that service to run into Hillcrest. And probably like during the discussions today, it came to my mind too because of the flexi service out to the airport, how we could combine the lot. And I do acknowledge your point about the Piazza, the hub area there actually being an ideal location to be able to piggyback off that as a, as a park and ride service. 
and we just got to get the transport nodes there on a regular basis. And also the Cambridge one too, I know that in some, some time ago, um, that sounded like quite a logical point to be able to shoot into the hub and, and back out and, and feedback from Cambridge residents was just going to extend more time onto them. So it's, it's always you push it in one way and it pokes out the other. So um, I think eventually probably in a, a separate service that utilises that and maybe every, you know, getting into Cambridge is, is every alternate one, but having one that services the city and, and also connects to the airport hospital, obviously. So um, we do know I maybe have to catch up with you offline about that if you weren't familiar of that service that we're trying to get up and running in October. Because Ax Axel has mentioned it okay. to me when he went away and said yeah. I would be the point of contact, but I haven't heard anything yet. Yes. Okay, I can follow that up for you. One, one of the things that would be ideal is that you have um, in other cities around the world, there's fast buses and there's um, slow buses, and you know that if you want to get point to point, if you can take the one that goes direct. Obviously, in New Zealand, we have a real problem with that because we don't have the mass, the critical mass in numbers. And I heard the gentleman before talking about the train, and it's probably exactly the same thing. I mean, we'd love to have a train. If that, if that was going past too, but um, <laughs> probably talking about a bus is all we need to do at the moment. But I really don't, oh, one thing, we don't want to see our rates going up by what a few of us mathematicians probably <laughs> flew some figures around because there was nothing mentioned in the proposals, but we were having horrors. Definitely felt that it was a bad move putting something like that out with no documents. Yeah, that's possibly another conversation for another day. Yeah, but thank you, Sue, for your um, submission. Appreciate you coming in. Thank you. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> you're my blind spot. <laughs> All right. Do you want to ask it? All right, we next we have our next submitter, um, Graham Dyer. Dwyer, sorry. Yep. Thank you and welcome. Indeed, so um, I was just talking to our neighbours there from. <laughs> which I don't know that we've had a conversation for, so well done. For yeah, that was um, quite handy having you. Yeah. Thanks to each other. So um, I'm here on yeah. behalf of Waikato Regional Airport, which is effectively the operator of the terminal and the aerodrome and also on behalf of Titanium Park, which is a development company that has undertaken um, subdivision and so on of land currently on the eastern side of the airport, um, then on the western side of the airport. And the reason I'm really here today is to, hopefully you've all read the submission, but there's a couple of key things, is that we're changing and growing. We need to be thought about and considered, and I know that that happens, but we've concluded by turning up to these forum, get more on the agenda and you get invited a bit more and eventually someone you know, reacts, which is great. <laughs> um, we have lodged with Waipa a plan change for land when you're standing in the terminal out to the right-hand side, a hill. Um, currently, 40 hectares of that land is zoned airport business, and we're looking to rezone another 90 hectares, so there'll be 130 hectares round number. Um, and we want to reinforce that there's kind of two things going on at the airport. There's the airport itself with the planes coming and going, which everyone gets all excited about. And um, there's all the industrial and business going on around it, which is really going to be significant. Um, I don't know if anyone here has been to East Tamaki um, Highbrook, which is up privately owned. Um, that's 90 hectares and worth about $2 billion. And aspirationally, we would see our new area in that same kind of scale, context, quality. So unless we're here telling you what our aspirations are and you're here asking us what your aspirations are, then um, yeah, we can't get any further. So um, a couple of things obviously aren't in your control, but uh, Southern Links we think has some real needs to have a focus on it, um, whether it's roads as we currently see them or whether it's a busway and a truckway or whatever, but I think um, it would be a shame for that designation to lapse. Um, also, we have started on some work on how we could get rail to the airport. We met with Kiwi Rail a few weeks ago. Unfortunately, the terminal's on the wrong side, and it costs 50 million to move it, so that's not likely to happen shortly. But 
to lose that corridor, particularly um, it isn't allowed for in Southern Lynx to get a rail connection to the airport or the airport precinct. Um, so we just need to start thinking about those things before it's too late. Um, welcome to take any questions. Okay. Um, you mentioned um, two parts to the airport. Um, obviously, with your growth, you're going to be increasing the num your employment numbers and people needing to get out to there for, for work. How do you see public transport services oh, it's servicing? It's our, our requirements. So um, there'll be several thousand or more people working around the airport. And currently the buses drive past from Taumuru to Hamilton. And um, we've just heard about Tamahiri as well. So I think it just needs to, if, if, if the team aren't aware of what's planned and coming on, then they can't plan. Um, we also have to, are likely to have to provide some kind of walking and cycling connection back to Hamilton. What that looks like and how that works, we don't know. But again, um, it will be critical to us. And we're currently finishing off some of the um, cycling network around the eastern side of the airport. Yeah, I've seen that, um, <coughs> excuse me, um, seen that cycling network and it's... We did have a bike about two years ago in the um, car park, which was the first time I'd ever seen a bike after seven <laughs> years, so it's starting. Yeah, just on that, do you provide um, safe lock-up facilities for cycles? Well, the one bike was out of my time. <laughs> <laughs> just, just with the rise of e-bikes, it's, um, you know, it's becoming we quite could do. a... I don't know that we've seen any demand, but... Um, Chicken and egg. Yeah, it is, potentially. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if any of you have ever tried to walk or drive, cycle over the Narrows Bridge. Well, I'd, yeah, it could be a life-ending thing for you, so I would um, suggest to you that's going to need a lot of attention going forward. Already we've seen a lot more traffic going along that side highway, and again, I know it's kind of outside the remit of this organisation, but it also is within it, um, mm -hmm. given your seat on the various committees. But that is going to be very, very problematic. You're just not going to go there on a bike across that bridge. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Chair. I just um, question with the titanium parking. What's the workforce that was currently at? Um, oh, currently, I, we think it's about, I can't remember, about 1,200 or something, but I think we'll get to about 5,000 people. So it's significant, and that will help um, the Peacock SL1, which is potentially coming into the city. And also a lot of our people draw on the cheaper housing that's in town meeting. Yeah. Um, just a little bit. Oh, have you finished? No, 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 sorry, just big numbers, really. You know, it's significant, yeah. And, yeah. and that'll create enough critical mass yeah. for some of these things to actually start working. Um, you mentioned the rail connection. Yeah. Um, I recall a previous submission in a different committee. Yeah, it's quite embarrassing. Um, we had a little line on it, but um, with, so a, with a tunnel under the runway, is that still there's an, there's nothing um, on the cards? Or? No. It's going to be very challenging. But it would be a real shame, like what, what you've seen in Cambridge, the rail corridor has been retained, even though they've got rid of the rail station at the end. It would be a real shame for it not to be future proof. We don't want to end up like Auckland. And it might not be rail for a long time, but it might be something else. But yeah, they were telling us that they, um, Kiwi Rail was saying they really like 20 metre corridors. But even taking it down to um, Mystery Creek, I mean, I don't know if anyone here has been to Sydney out to Olympic Park and get out to a game of rugby, you're back in the city straight away. So if we're going to be aspirational, we just need to get things in plans and chip away. Um, any further questions? Well, we appreciate you coming in to talk yeah. to us. Yeah, and um, yeah, keep keep coming back. We will. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Right, that was our last submitter. So yeah, well done, everyone. Um, I declare the submissions hearings closed. Thank you.